My research project began in early October and has evolved throughout the past seven months quite significantly. When I originally began, I wanted to explore the emergence of new sexual subjectivities online as a challenge to Western heteronormativity using the asexual community, AVEN, as a case study. Digital culture is changing our understandings of our sexual identities, which are a fundamental part of how we engage in the world. In Western mediated societies, there are now new sexual categories emerging through digital cultures. However, new sexual categories suffer from a lack of visibility in socio-cultural contexts favouring heterosexuality. I wanted to address the traction asexuality is gaining within online spaces as a new sexual category and the resulting implications for the digital humanities and normative cultural understanding of sex through my project. My project aimed to explore how digitally established identities have been shaped by their online nature and contemporary mediated technologies, as well as how subjectivity and sexual identity can be formulated simultaneously within an online community made up of individuals whose identity is regarded as invisible. However, I quite quickly became aware that the field of asexuality studies was very small and little to no literature was available on how asexuality has developed through the internet or prior to it. I did not discover asexuality myself until I first gained access to the internet around my mid to late teens and I am not alone in regards to defining asexuality and other emerging identities in terms of the internet. Existing studies are focused around online communities that rehearse biologically essentialist definitions of asexuality, placing it in direct opposition to historically identifiable instances of absence or lack. With this in mind, I struggled to even define what asexuality might be, and my project shifted to focus on the historical context through which asexuality has developed and what we might take asexuality to mean, be or do. I came up with a new set of research problematics. I wanted to explore how I could research an identity category that had an invisible social and cultural history, was defined through an absence, and how best to address the ontological complications of this. I set out to map the different sets of epistemies and discourses that have become understood as asexuality. Due to the numerous contradictory definitions of asexuality, that as a trans-identified researcher who does not subscribe to Western notions of the gender binary and exclusive sexualities I found restrictive, I set out to do this without defining what asexuality may be. I aimed to produce a theoretical account of attraction and desire in order to provide groundwork for my research without defining my object of study in a way that I found problematic. I hoped this would enable me to move beyond current definitions of asexuality, which have largely understood asexuality discursively through a lack or an absence of desire and attraction. I began to explore the idea that of a series of thematically organised case studies that complicated the notions of desire or attraction through themes of politicisation, pathologisation and medicalisation to add up to a genealogical analysis of asexuality. I mapped out a theoretical framework to ground my project methodologically, pulling together concepts that explored history and the production of subjugated knowledges through notions of the archive and genealogical inquiry. I started by exploring Svetkovich's concept of the archive of feelings, linking this to Foucauldian genealogy through its emphasis on marginalisation and alternative ways to explore invisibility. Svetkovich's archive of feelings offers one approach of archiving invisible histories, using oral history and memory as a way both to preserve the past and provide context to unspoken trauma present in areas of contemporary society. Exploring Svetkovich's work in relation to asexuality enabled me to reach an understanding of asexual invisibility and erasure as haunting the present, remaining culturally and socially invisible or inaccessible through its unwritten history. Kuntzman's paper summarised Svetkovich's work as making the past matter. Through highlighting the particular usefulness of the archive to document histories that have been erased through political structures such as heteronormativity. As a student actively involved in working with young trans communities who are marginalised or ignored by society and with lived experience of coming to an identity that the rest of society claims does not exist, I have tried to stay conscious of producing work that matters or that means something. Following Svetkovich's work, I set out to produce a representation of struggles and the raw memory of fights that have provided previously ignored or overlooked accounts of asexuality that have remained unspoken through highlighting moments and instances of asexual practice, identity or politics through a historical inquiry. The invisibility of asexuality meant my research necessarily became equally concerned with the compiling of a genealogy of asexuality as it was with analysing the moments included or left out of this 
in order to listen to the absences present within historical accounts of medicalization, pathologization, and politicization, I therefore turn to the work of Derrida. Derrida's notion of the trace has allowed me to consider the ways in which the erasure of asexuality has left in its place an absent presence. Derrida's work allowed me to understand the importance of remaining conscious that the absent yet present, invisible or silent moments of history are unavoidably connected to the present and affect the ways in which the future will be shaped. For example, Kinsey's work on human sexual behaviour identified sexuality as a continuum, which he presented as a seven-point scale with heterosexuality at one end and homosexuality at the other. An absence or a lack of sexual response was given the value of X. Derrida's work argued that silence could be understood as a strategic response to discourse. The absence of any exploration of participants whose sexual response was recorded by Kinsey as X can be read from a Derridian point of view as a strategy of discourse at the time. Whilst Kinsey's work makes speakable that participants given a value of X, it does so in uncertain terms, suggesting that X warrant further investigation but without any explanation as to the circumstances or results that led to their value being assigned as X. Using Derrida's work, I was able to consider Kinsey's X as simultaneously haunting and being haunted by modern conceptualisations of asexuality. Contemporary asexuality is written out of the Diagnostics and Statistics Manual in similar means to Kinsey's exclusion of X despite its trace. The DSM-5 contains two disorders that describe sexual dysfunctions diagnosed and understood through lack or absence synonymous in definition to Kinsey's ex-participants. However, both diagnoses are dismissed when the individual self-identifies as asexual. Using the Derridian notion of the trace, this can be read as Kinsey's work haunting contemporary medical practice as the DSM-5 delegitimizes asexual practices and simultaneously creates a further erasure of asexual identity. Understanding Foucault's genealogical approach, combined with Derrida's notion of the trace, I added Deleuze to my theoretical framework and came to understand my themes of medicalisation, pathologisation and politicisation as assemblages, which territorialised bodies, setting limits on what the body can do or become and in turn determining the shape of asexuality. I decided to trace the invisibility of asexuality through the historical accounts of medicalisation, pathologisation and politicisation assemblages to examine their interconnections and relations with asexual practices and the ways in which they have shaped contemporary understandings of asexuality. After beginning to gather my data for my case studies, I encountered a further problem. Two of my chosen themes of medicalisation and pathologisation became increasingly difficult to distinguish between. I struggled to decide which case studies should be placed in which chapter and on what grounds, as there were significant areas of overlap present. I was aware from the beginning that depending on the ways in which I analysed each case study, they could potentially fit anywhere, but drawing the lines between med medicalisation and pathologisation became increasingly challenging. Once I began to analyse my case studies, my project themes began to fit together uncomfortably. So my next change was to discard my original chapter headings and allow the data to determine my themes when my case studies have been fully identified and analysed. I now set out to thematically analyse case studies of traces of absence and silence surrounding asexuality, deconstructing the discourses that have contributed to the privileging of heterosexual desire throughout history. In doing so, I seek to illuminate the ways in which asexual practices outside of heteropenetrative and reproductive sexuality have come to be defined through lack. Through deconstruction of discourses that have contributed to the maintenance of asexual invisibility throughout history, I build a methodological framework for researching identities claimed to be culturally or socially invisible. I will map traces of asexuality throughout the history of heterosex, demonstrating the ways in which non-desire has become understood as something that must be fixed, erased, or is understood as being outside of Western conceptualizations of sexuality. I will employ Derrida's notion of the trace alongside conceptualizations of haunting to highlight the importance of representing asexual histories in order to enable a broader reading of what asexuality might be and do. I will seek to explore haunting as an effective invisibility that enables an alternative history of asexuality that destabilises the normative and understands asexuality as a grounds for rethinking the centrality of sex rather than understanding it in relation to an absence or a lack. Historic discourses will be understood as haunting contemporary Western understandings of asexuality, and so Derrida's notion of the trace will be methodologically central to my project in order to open up space to hear that which has been previously discounted, disregarded or unobserved, due to its absence or inaccessibility. I will not seek to provide an exhaustive account of asexual history. 
Instead, I am setting out to represent instances of asexual practice and examine how contemporary understandings of asexuality have been shaped and defined through lack. It is my hope that this project will lay the groundwork for further studies into contemporary asexuality and online subjectivities.